It's a wonderful privilege and pleasure to introduce uh, Pastor Adrian White to you. Uh, we have been friends for almost two decades. Um, she took over pastoring the Abounding Love Ministries uh, from Apostle Albert. And he's doing a wide range of ministries. She preaches every week. She loves God's word. And uh, I love to see their leadership and their uh, victory denomination that they're part of. Uh, she developed a curriculum for, um, for how young girls become young women uh, in maturing in Christ and what it means to be a woman of Christ uh, as you go through this life. And we was able then to bring it to uh, their ministry in Africa and share it there uh, with folks who have never heard these truths before. Uh, so there's just a kind of constant pulsing energy to grow deep into the scriptures, uh, to be a passionate pastor, to be vitally involved in the community. Um, we're just delighted to be friends with Pastor Adrian and Albert, but also to be in fellowship with their church and to welcome her to come and preach God's word to you now, if you would. All right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be here at First Presbyterian Church, I must admit. I want to start off by saying thank you to Pastor Garrett and also to the leadership here at First Presbyterian Church. Thank you so much for having us. I also want to honor and say thank you to my husband and to the leadership of Abounding Love Ministries. We're all over the place. I love it. Um, I just, you know, want to thank the Lord for all of you and especially to our joint congregations and especially, I must say, to Abounding Love Ministries because this is their second service. So I just want to thank all of you for um, being willing to make the necessary adjustments so that we could have this time here together. And I want you to hear that word. You'll be hearing it a lot together. Praise God. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you that it will go forth with simplicity, with accuracy, Lord God. I thank you that it will touch hearts, Lord God. You will minister to each one of us exactly what you want us to do. We thank you for it now. Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher, and I yield myself to you. Amen. Um, I would like to um, draw your attention to the book of Ephesians. I heard Pastor Garrett saying I knew that he would be teaching. He has been teaching from the book of Ephesians. So I kind of wanted to stay in that vein. And I guess the Lord wanted me to stay in that vein too. Because about a month or so ago, I was in... Um, Alabama, one of my favorite places now, since my daughter and my grandchildren are there, we were there, and I was backing out of her yard, and a song came on, and when I heard the song, immediately I knew the theme or the area that I should be ministering here today, so I'm grateful to that to God for that. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, verse 13, and verse 16, you'll see it on the screen. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Verse 13, until we all come, are we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. In mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Praise God. You know, as I read this text, I can clearly see that our Father has a dream. God has a dream for you and I. And that dream is that we be together. And I believe that it's our job to help fulfill that desire or that dream that the Father has. I have to admit that whenever 
the opportunity arises for us to come to First Press. There's this instant excitement that starts flowing in our hearts at Abound in Love Ministries. And when I arrived here today, I could tell that it's no different. It's the same thing here. I've seen people over the weeks leading up to this from First Press, and I can sense the excitement that we always have when we have this opportunity again to come together. Just the other day, my husband and I were walking on the lake, something that we often do and we see much of our family from First Press on the lakes. We, sp we saw one person in particular, Paula, who's a member here. And when she realized that this was the Sunday that we would be getting together, I could see that excitement all over again. I could see it. I knew it, you know, that this is a God thing. And I realized that that excitement is there because I believe that all of us, every one of us in here is fully aware that that is what we're supposed to be. We are aware, we know that God has created us to be together. Now, I know that, you know, we may not have all the um, things, the kinks worked out or whatever. We don't know how to accomplish that. You know, we don't know, you know, just what to do. But I think this is part of what we do. We just get together. Okay, we just get together, right? So um, I believe that it's because of that that, you know, we're, we're just aware of it. And we, we sense that we're supposed to be together, yeah. all right? You know, um, again, we may not have all of the answers. And today, I believe that my assignment is really simple. I don't think that I have some deep philosophical, theological message to give us today. I think I have just a really simple message, a message that comes from the heart of God, a plea from the heart of God for you and I to do more things together. That's what I believe it's all about today, okay? Now, one of the things I enjoy is um, a fellowship that I attend every now and again um, at the Cozans house. It's called International Partners, International Partners, International Friendship Partners. And it's a fellowship that they have at their house once a month, every fourth Friday, I think it is. And if you're not a part of it, you need to check them out. It's a wonderful thing. I love the way their home comes alive and they welcome all of the internationals into their house and they just move around and everybody just loving on each other and just really having a great time. It's a beautiful, beautiful fellowship to be a part of. And you know, I think about it. I, I have to admit, I sometimes, I don't know if it's envy or if it's admiration. I think it's admiration, but sometimes it might be envy too. I, I, we'll see. But anyway, what am I talking about? When I look at my husband and Pastor Garrett and their relationship, I look at how they purposely take time to spend time together. They do that. I love that. And then I realize that not only do my husband and Pastor um, Gary do that, but also that relationship that they have has yielded a relationship, the same type of relationship with Brother Jay Hyde. They do the same thing. They purposely set it up. I'm listening. Just the other day at the lakes again, we ran into Pastor Garrett, and the question was, okay, so when are we going to get together? Okay, that's the way they do it. And then I cannot, you know, I look at the relationship between our own Elder John Norwood and Brother Whitney Alexander and, you know, the, um, the group there that walks the lakes and all of those things. It's just such a blessing to see it. And I would be remiss if I didn't speak of the relationship that God has given my husband and I with the Cozans family and specifically my relationship with Garland and with Leanne. I love those ladies, and I know that they love me as well. That's my people, y'all. <laughs> we love each other. I thank God. And I just found out last night that Garland and our birthdays are two days apart. I didn't even realize it, praise God. But anyway, I just love them, and I just love the relationship that we have. You know, and one of the things about this, these relationships, they exceed the boundaries of the church. It's not just a church thing, you know. It's a, rela it's a relationship, you know. It's a relationship. You can, you can find us doing a number of different things together. It's not just, you know, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, or that type of thing, you know. And I also realize that we don't always agree in these relationships. We have our own minds. We have our own thoughts and opinions. But one thing we do agree upon, we agree to stay in love. 
with one another. That's non-negotiable, okay? Now, I realize that it's not enough for those people that I spoke of, and there are other relationships, but it's not enough for just us to enjoy this togetherness. I believe that it's our job to bring others in y'all being the others, to come to do the same thing, to establish some relationships beyond yourself, beyond your denomination, beyond your race, all of those different things. There's so many amazing things that we discover when we do that. I love, I'm, I love music, and I love the Word of God. And I'm t I tell you, I can kind of make any adjustment with the Word of God and with the music as long as it is scriptural. Okay, I remember um, um, a man of God, Apostle John Nelson. He was like a hillbilly, I believe. And they used to have that little music. Okay, I can get with that. I can get with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, I went to Beeson School. It's really um, very, um, in not instrumental, classical music. I can get with that. They love God. I mean, I love it all. And that's the way we have to be because there's so many different facets to who God is, and he's put a little bit of himself in each one of us, okay? So what I do is, what I like to do is I try to make a point, and I'm going to do even better, but I try to make a point that whenever I come to any event at First Presbyterian, I don't like to come by myself. I like to bring people with me. I like to bring some members or I bring even some of my closest friends that are not even a part of Abound in Love Ministries. I heard Pastor Garrett speak about the, um, the home groups, the, what are they called? The groups? They're, they're coming up. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. They're coming up soon. And I can remember being a part of one at um, the young, kid, Chris, Chris Young, I think their name was, Chris Oh, I can't think of their name. Anyway, I was a part of that. But I also had the opportunity to be a part of one at Garland's home. Got a chance to sit down with Judge Downing, um, his wife, um, different people, okay? And just had a great time. Their father, I loved his voice. I miss his voice. But, you know, just a great time getting together. And if it's okay. I'll probably drop in to some of those other classes, so I'm going to get a schedule because I enjoy it so much, okay? Now, I know that there's a slogan that we've heard a lot in Baton Rouge, better, we're better together, um, be one BR and all of those different things, and that's great, you know, that's really great. But this morning, we're talking about a unity or togetherness that supersedes anything that a man can manufacture, I realize that God is not looking for a photo op that we are to look like we are together. He's not interested in looking like being together. He's, looking, he's interested in us being together because together is where and how you and I are supposed to be because Jesus died so that we could be together. That's the reason why he died, okay? Again, looking at those scriptures from Ephesians 1, 4, 1 through 6, we can clearly see it's a call for unity. All of the scriptures that I read is showing us how we are connected, we're joined together, we're one, one hope. All of us are hoping for the same thing. When we leave this earth, we want to see Jesus. We want to be in heaven forever, all of those things. And I, again, I realize that he's more concerned God is more concerned about the unity of our faith than he is about the unity of our race or even the unity of our politics. It has nothing to do with what God is wanting to accomplish with us, the unity of our faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, and I also understand and realize that there is a unity that God is capable of achieving, and he's working it out, y'all. Whether we, you know, we look at the world, the world seems to be in such chaos, you know, in the natural, but behind all of that, God has a plan that's working. And the scriptures say in the book of Revelation that the kingdoms of this world are beco will become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. So that lets me know that even though it looked like wars are all over the place, somewhere God is bringing it all together and it's going to set under his lordship and his authority. So that's the thing that we need to focus on, okay? You know, it's true. We are different. We are different. We look different, okay? We think different. But that's not a mistake. 
That's not a curse that we look different. God did that on purpose. He did it on purpose, okay? And our job is to embrace the differences. We embrace the differences. We forbear one another in love, and we come together so that we can see what beautiful things God has in store for each one of us. I realized something. My daughter is in Huntsville, Alabama, and God is using her to do amazing things there. But you know what? Even her being there, she had a strong, solid foundation. That was a time that she spent here at First Press interning. That Brother Whitney put some things in my daughter, he and Phyllis, that we are seeing the fruit of it now. That she's just, her life is just flourishing. But again, it's connected, that togetherness. There are things that your children have that you need that may be in me for your children. There are things that are in you that my children need. We've got to come together, y'all, because if not, we're missing out. We're shortchanging one another. We're shortchanging even our children. I am so grateful, so grateful for that time that Ariel spent here. And it was not easy. Why? Because we're different. We look different. When we go swimming, her hair does something that other girls' hair don't do. And they okay with getting in the water. She don't want to get in the water. Okay, but guess what? It was okay. God had a greater purpose. So those things, we just got to forbear. We just got to put up with some of those things, okay? And you know, amen. Give the Lord a hand. Just got to put up with it. I realize and we realize that heaven's going to look a lot different than what we are used to. I think it's going to look more kind of like this, the way I see it this morning. People from all different races, we sang the song, all different races and walks of life coming together to do one thing, and that's to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We've got to keep our minds on that, okay? Um, in accomplishing this unity, it's a couple of things that are required. The Bible talked about it in Ephesians. It's humility. It's gentleness, it's patience, and it is forbearance. We got to forbear, put up with one another. And along with these attributes, there's something else. It says, and having an eagerness to maintain the unity of the Spirit. So in other words, we got to want it, y'all. We have to want it badly. We've got to want it more than we want anything else, okay? We've got to want the unity of the faith. I'm reminded of something. I think about it very often, but I can remember the first time past, um, Brother David Kozan and his family came over to Abound in Love. We were having a family and friends day, and we eat after the family and friends day. And I'll never forget, Leanne, I was walking Leanne out the door, and she stopped at the door, and she looked at me, and she asked me a question, and she may not remember this, but I remember it. She looked at me, and she said, Adrian, she said, we're not going to just be church friends, huh? That's what she asked me. And I said, no, Leanne, we're not just going to be church friends. And I believe by the grace of God that has been proven to be true, that we are not just church friends. Praise God. She is my friend. We are friends. Praise God. That's who we are. So we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. How bad do we want what God wants? Are we more interested in appeasing our culture than we are in pleasing our Father? Okay? Not only that, what mindsets are we willing to abandon? We all have mindsets, y'all. Things that have been taught us from a very young age that we just hold on to. But if we want to accomplish this, what God wants us to accomplish, we have to abandon some of those mindsets, okay, to give him what he wants. And it's very obvious, again, what he wants. He wants us to be together. That's it. That's it. Okay. Now, this is just a sidebar, something that I thought about. I thought about 50 on 50. And some of you may know what 50 on 50 is or was. Some of you may not. But just for those who may not know what it was. In the year of 2016, the Lord gave 
Apostle White and Pastor Garrett an idea. And the idea was for, some, for the Families of Abounding Love Ministries to come together with families here at First Press. And we were to unite and do life together. And some of you persevered through all of the things that distracted it. And um, you persevered and you moved along with it. And, you know, but for the most part, I don't think it ever accomplished really the fullness of what God wanted it to accomplish. But I thought about something. If I don't know if you will remember it, but I remember it very well. It was the eve of the launch of 50 on 50 when the historic flood of 2016 came. It was the eve of it. And it kept us from getting together, doing what was the purpose and the plan of God. And I do not doubt if that flood was not an attempt from the gates of hell to destroy or to hinder what God was trying to do. I believe it, y'all, that, you know, when that happened, you know, things just, people's lives begin to change. Everybody began to start looking after, you know, taking, trying to survive is what people were trying to do. And again, the Lord did it supernaturally. He still brought us together. He still brought us together to do it. But 50 on 50, I believe, was to do some other things because not only did that happen in 2016, but in 2016, a month before that, we had no idea what was going to happen. That was something that had our city on edge. It was the shooting of Mr. Alton Sterling. And, I mean, things were just, it was just chaotic. But in the midst of that, God spoke to two individuals and had them come up with a plan that would counter, I believe, a lot of those things that we saw in our city. So, you know, again, that's just me thinking, you know, that, you know, perhaps that's what it was. But if it was, the Bible says that the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. So again, I'm standing here today making a plea for us to come together, okay? Now, um, Ephesians 4.10, it talks about how 10 through 12, it talks about how God gave gifts to men. He gave gifts, the five-fold ministry. And that, get those giftings have one goal, and that goal is to, again, bring us all into the unity of the faith. There's, it's the same thing over and over again. The five-fold ministry's gifts, what Pastor Gary do, is, has done today, this is all about helping us to come together so that that we can unite in the faith, praise God, all right? And, you know, I realize that it's not about our race because our races may never be united. Our politics may never be in agreement, but our faith, our faith, that unites us, y'all. So that's what we have to focus on. It's the unity of the faith and not our race, the unity of the faith, praise God. Okay, so again, reminding us, we're one body, one spirit. We all have one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of us all, the Lord God Almighty, okay? Now, again, we can see it. The Father's after one thing. He wants us to be one, all right? Now, I believe that we need to see the benefits of being one. I'm reminded of what the Scripture says in the book of Genesis chapter 11. And this is when the Tower of Babel was being formed, okay? And God took notice. They were doing something that, wasn't, that was totally contrary to what God wanted, but it got God's attention. And it got God's attention because the people were together. Okay, and this is what the word says. It says, and the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. He said, because they are together, even though what they're doing is for evil, 
because they are so united and together, there will be nothing that they will not be able to do. We have a lot of work to do, and the best way for us to accomplish that work is by us being together. So that's a benefit. Another benefit, and we've heard it already, Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. In other words, it's a refreshing. It's such a good feeling when people get together in unity. When I walked in here this morning, I could feel the excitement. I could feel the anticipation that we were all experiencing. And I believe that this is an opportunity, or like I like to call it, a god opportunity for each one of us to set the atmosphere for the presence of God so that he can come into our lives and rearrange our lives, do those things that have been hard for us to do, minister to our children, heal our marriages, our finances, everything, our bodies. All of those things can happen because guess what? He commands the blessing in unity, in unity. So even today, you don't even have to wait. You can receive whatever it is that you need from the Lord right now, okay? You can receive it. Pastor Garrett and Apostle White, I want y'all to stand up. And I want to thank you guys want to thank y'all for continuing your relationship because your relationship has given the rest of us and so many more than the people that are here an opportunity to come into some relationships. And I believe that this is a divine connection, that there are many more divine connections that the Lord have in here that we need to make in order to be able to further the gospel and to further the kingdom of God. Let's give them a hand. Two decades, y'all. Two decades. Y'all have been a great role model of what together should look like, and we thank you for it. So today, as I close, my desire is that after today, each one of us will become eager. We will become eager. We won't just leave away from here today and just go home. But we're going to make a point to make a connection with someone else to see what God wants to do. I believe that. I believe it with all of my heart. My heart. The world out there needs what we are experiencing in here this morning. And it's our job to give it to them, okay? Um, in a few minutes, we'll be partaking of communion. We'll get to share around the communion table. We'll, be, we'll get to um, remember and pay tribute to the very thing that brought us into common union, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He died again so that you and I could be together. And I'll just say it the way I talk. You know, I try to keep my, my English together and all of that. But the bottom line is, y'all, y'all, <laughs> we better together. That's just the bottom line. There's no other way to say it. Our lives, praise God, our lives are better together. It just feels right, don't it? Praise God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand.